Hey, I'm Big Lou, Big Lou Barbecue and other things I want to do. And let me tell you what I've got going on for you. We're going to do some chicken quarters, Satsuma glazed chicken quarters. Now, Satsumas are these wonderful little orange type things. They're imported from Japan and they're very similar to a mandarin orange. Many people may be familiar with mandarin oranges because they come candied or gelled in those uh, little jars. Um, and it's what they use in the uh, ambrosia and stuff. Uh, Satsumas are really sweet and they tolerate one or two freezes a year if you protect them a little bit and that's about all we get here in our subtropical climate of the Gulf South so Satsumas are real popular sweet like candy sweet only make about one or two seeds per um, Satsuma so you don't have to spit out a lot of seeds and easy to peel love Satsumas and they make a great jelly so I tried to make some jelly the other week because uh, we had a lot of them. We went to a friend's house and picked a bunch and um, had a few coolers full. We gave away what we could give away and uh, we ate what we could eat and we juiced what we could juice to drink. And I juiced about uh, three or four gallons to make jelly with. I made seven batches of jelly the other day, but the first batch didn't gel. Looks like that. I made the mistake. I think I put the sugar in too early on that first batch because it had been about a year since we had made any jelly. My wife told me I was putting the sugar in too early. She was right, but that, that's not jelly. That, that's a orange glazed syrup stuff, all right? Rest of them came out pretty good, but not this one. Uh, I've got about four pints like this. So I was wondering, well, how can I uh, re-gel the um, Satsuma jelly? So I did some research. One was a video I saw about Michigan Snow Pony. She had a great video on apple jelly that didn't gel and how to re-gel it and what to do with it if you don't re-gel it and I learned a lot from that. I don't watch her channel. I don't know what it's mainly about but I know that that re-gelling video was very informative and a good video so I'll put a link to it down below. And then there's Cast Iron Skillet. Um, Cast Iron Skillet's a husband and wife team. The husband's name is John and right now I am so sorry but the wife's name is slipping but she's the better half of uh, Cast Iron Skillet and she wrote um, a great Thing back to a reply to me to tell me how to re jellify or get this stuff to jellify and reprocess it. And um, I was really going to do it, but my wife said, No, 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 use the stuff as a glaze for pies and cakes and stuff, and it'd probably be good as a meat glaze too. I figured, heck, an orange glaze like this would be delicious on ribs or pork loin or something, but I'm going to test it out on chicken quarters right now. Anyway, check out Cast Iron Skillet. I'll have a link down below. Got some other shout outs in this video to go to. Uh, so let's go see how we get this done. Big Lou Barbecue. I rambled long enough. Thank you for watching. Well, let's do the prep work. I had a 10 pound bag of uh, chicken leg quarters, one of those plastic sacks you buy at the grocery store, and I marinated it in the only marinade you'll ever need. Yep, that's the name of the marinade, the only marinade you'll ever need. And I get the recipe for it out of this book by Stephen Reichlin. He's a fellow who sells a bunch of barbecue books and has a few TV shows. If you open the book up to the marinade chapter, the first uh, recipe is called The Only Marinade You'll Ever Need, and it's pretty good stuff. It's uh, lemon juice and olive oil based and has a bunch of fresh herbs in it. However, I'm modify the recipe and use dried herbs. I don't don't keep fresh parsley and fresh cilantro and uh, fresh basil on hand. So um, I just used uh, dry herbs with it, but it's a great marinade anyway. All right, and then I put on this LeBlanc's uh, Guns and Roses rub from LeBlanc's. Cajun Craven sent that to me. He's got a great channel, a lot of great recipes. Check out Cajun Cravens. And he also sent some to Chris Biggs, who cooked some chicken quarters the other day. At the time I made this video, I hadn't watched his video yet because I didn't want it to influence this, but he cooked some great chicken quarters on a PK grill using this same rub that he had gotten from Cajun Cravens. And uh, I'll tell you what, PK grills are awesome. Um, I used to have one. I had a 1969 one and I learned to cook on that thing. It fell out of my truck. I'm going to tell you that story in the next scene. Anyway, I'll tell you somebody else who cooks on a PK grill and is also awesome is um, Tom Horseman. So check out uh, Cajun Cravens, Chris Biggs at Biggs Home Cooking and Tom Horseman. All great cooking channels on YouTube. All right, guys, it's time to take this out to the grill and get the grill thrill on. All right, I'm going to be cooking these on my old Smokey. I've had this old Smokey about five years. And I uh, repainted it last spring. So I got my name on it. All right. Now, I mentioned uh, when I was doing the chicken that Chris Biggs did some uh, chicken quarters. By the way, I'm putting these on. Um, I've got mostly B&B oak lump charcoal in there and a few royal oak briquettes. All right. Anyway, um, I mentioned that Biggs did a. Uh, 
the chicken quarters on this PK this week. I hadn't seen the video yet, but I can't wait to see it. I had a PK for years, learned to cook on it. It fell out of my truck when I was, um, my daughter was born. We were moving in from a trailer because we lived in a trailer park at the house. And when I say trailer park, I mean an RV trailer. So we needed to get someplace. So we uh, moved in the house. And when I was moving, um, fell out of my truck and uh, didn't really have the money at the time to buy a new one. And a friend of mine down the street when I was growing up, my dad had a Weber when I was learning to cook and they had an old Smokey and they made fantastic meals on their old Smokey. And I had another friend at the time that my PK went out, he cooked on an old Smokey. He says, man, don't spend the money on a PK. Not that they're bad grills, guys, they're good grills. But I, I just couldn't afford it at the time, just started a family, you know? He said, get you an old Smokey. And the truth is, this is probably the third one I've had since 2003. So they don't last forever, but they are fantastic chicken cookers. All right, well, Tom Horseman, he also cooks on a PK, but he recently bought him a, a Old Smoky, and uh, he's done some modifications for it. Uh, but what I like about the Old Smoky, your coals are eight inches from the uh, grate. Uh, on other, other grills, they're about five inches or shallower. Uh, but because they're eight inches, it makes an Old Smoky a fantastic chicken cooker. You can see these chicken pieces have been on here on top of uh, mostly oak lump. They're sizzling, but they're not flaring up. The top's been off, and I can trust them to cook right here for about an hour um, before they're done. And after they're cooked, I'm gonna come and put that orange glaze on them, and I've got room to fit them all. Probably gonna cook up some sausage tonight, too, if I can find room to get that on there. So we'll cover these up. Been rambling again. Want to give another shout out. When I ramble, I, that old Led Zeppelin song goes through my head. Ramble on, you know. Uh, if you haven't checked out Mega Fred Zeppelin's channel, he grills a lot on a Weber. And uh, Mega Fred Zeppelin, hi Fred, uh, he uh, does a lot of grilling on his Weber, but he also has like a video vlog channel. Gives you a lot of other information too. But check out Mega Fred Zeppelin. He's out of California. All right, so. We will be back in about an hour, or as Fred Zeppelin says, we'll be back. All right, I'm going to open up this um, non-jelly jelly, this uh, Satsuma syrup, because, uh, you know, I'm not going to base it on from this uh, mason jar. I'm going to pop it open with one of these uh, church keys. I think all these church key openers, you got a can opener on that side and a, a bottle opener on this side. That works real good for popping up the mason jars. All right, and no, it did not gel, but it's thick and gooey. Look how thick it pours out of there. All right, Hannah, you want to taste this super sweet stuff? Yes, please. All right, and she's going to hold the camera and give her that with that, that hand. It's trippy. Well, taste it. Mm. And I'm going to taste it with this spoon here. They made taste, soda out of this, Slippy. It tastes like... Bunny Satsuma jelly, but it's going to be good on that chicken, and I know it'll be good on ribs and stuff. All right, I'm going to cover this back up. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. Heck, maybe it'll gel if it gets cold. I don't know. But that's, you know what, I'm going to need more to uh, coat that chicken with. So if your jelly doesn't gel, um, use it as a glaze for cakes, pies, as my wife said, and meats, as yeah. I say. All right, Big Lou Barbecue. All right, it's been just at an hour. I put these on about 4.30 in the afternoon. It's about 5.30, darkness has set in. And uh, that hiss you hear is from a 1970 Coleman 237A kerosene lantern. Um, but it's a pretty bright lantern. And so it's what we're gonna look at. Now, I know darkness has set in a little bit and I'll show you what they look like in, inside. But I want you to know they've got a pretty red color. All right, it's, it's uh, gorgeous red color they don't look quite done but remember you cook raw meat with a thermometer you do not cook raw meat with a clock you can cook cakes and pies and pasta casseroles and stuff with a clock but you cook raw meat with a thermometer so let's see what that says let's see if i can lower this down a little bit 192 194 well heck that's done can you read that right there See what it says in the thigh meat here. 
185, 193, and that's one of the bigger pieces. Let's check this one right here. Uh, that one's not as done as the other one. It says 168, 169. It's close to done, but it's not there yet. That one's definitely done. 170, 182, and right there on the joint, 174. Nah. They're gonna stay on a little longer anyway. Yep. 176, 182. 175, 176. I'm looking for 180. They're real, real close. So I'm gonna cover them back up, let them go about five more minutes. Then I'm gonna glaze them and um, we're gonna have chicken. All right, still got that mahogany red, uh, reddish brown color. This one was one that we were worried about. See where it's at now. Seventy-five, one seventy-eight, one eighty. I'm good with it. Right there at the joint. Ah, I dropped it. Dead nabbit. You know what? I'm pretty sure it's done. I'll wash that uh, thermometer off inside. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is get this uh, sticky, sweet jelly that didn't gel glaze, and I'm just gonna paint the top, the skin side of all of these chicken pieces. Now, I didn't flip this chicken at all. Um, this old smoky grill, I didn't flip it. Now, I don't have my tongs with me, but I think, wonder if it's burned. Yeah, it kind of looks black there, but it's not burned. Just a few charred pieces. Um, the only reason you're seeing it black is because it's really dark out here and the lighting's poor. I'll show you what it looks like on the underside when we get in. Yeah, there's some char, but it, it's not, it's not uh, burned on the bottom. I trust this grill to cook chicken for an hour or two, but not overcooking the underside. Maybe if I was going two hours, I'd flip it. If I'm doing a spatchcock chicken, I'll flip it, but these chicken quarters have done a bunch of them. Billion chicken quarters in Old Smoky. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but I've done a lot of chicken quarters in Old Smoky. I don't have to flip them. All right, first time with this orange glaze though, I think I poured out too much. Well, I didn't know how long it would go. Maybe I should glaze the bottom of them, but yeah, let's do that. No, let's not. We're gonna let them sit like that. That's not burn bad. Mm -mm. Look at that. See? It's sitting there for a while, but I'm not going to glaze the bottom of them. Because uh, I don't want to turn them over at this point. So I'll just put another coat on. We'll check back in about five minutes once this bakes on there. Mmm, I think it's going to be delicious with that LeBlanc and that only marinade you ever need. And this Setsuma sticky sweet glaze. Five minutes, these things are done. I wish you could smell that chick, that sugar on there. So, get them off of here. That's not bad at all. All right, been sitting that side for an hour. See what I'm talking about? These are beautiful, man. Just gorgeous. All right. So, I'll show you what they look like inside. I'm gonna toast up some French bread and some sausage on here. That one had the backbone cut out when I got it. I've watched Biggs's video while these were cooking. He took the backbone out of all of his. Thought that was a good idea. Okay, well there's the toasted French bread. Looks like that. That Old Smokey does a good job of toasting too without burning. I really like the way it cooks stuff like this, especially the chicken. 
here's the uh, sausage. Sausage is on there for about an hour and it's done, but you can see it's not burned. Uh, that's uh, that green onion and um, green onion and jalapeno sausage so I can get my vegetables so you don't think I'm a complete cretin. Oh man, I just offended everybody on the island of Crete. Hey, Crete's a beautiful island. I've been there. I saw the Palace of Gnosis and the Minoans and everything. All right, now there's that chicken. That beautiful chicken. We marinated it in the only marinade you'll ever need. And then we put the LeBlancs on there and then we glazed it with this golden shimmery orange uh, Satsuma glaze. It's going to be good. Let me invite my daughter to see if she wants to join in the taste test before we feed the family. Just look at that. <laughs> it's going to be good. That's some good barbecue right okay, there. Okay, well, I uh, cut one of the thigh and legs apart and I gave it to my daughter who's just off camera. She didn't want to be on camera tonight. Uh, but I tell you what, it, the camera was off when I cut that open. But can you see that right there? That is some good looking chicken, y'all. All right. Uh, that's just the meat with that everything marinade. I got to get some of that skin with the glaze on it. Let me get a piece of that skin with the glaze on it. Just the skin. Uh-oh. Mm. <laughs> Look, if you've got to make homemade jelly and the jelly don't gel, glaze something with it. It's good on meat. Big Lou barbecue. Gracias por mirar.